thank you, thank you. Oh, boy, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I can only say that, uh, that we got a surprise package for you. I've got tonight a cavalcade of show business personalities. And I don't dress like this every day. I dress like this maybe once every 40 years, and maybe on Halloween, too. But do join me for a party of parties, my friends. And the big show is only now just about to begin. So come on in. 78 times I've tried to read Joe Franklin's thoughts. I hope he doesn't take this wrong. If I could do that, that would be a miracle. Uh, my turn. He's really kissing me. Whoa, me I was pretending. I think this is kinky. Well, my producer and I thought it might be interesting to show the world out there a sample of the chaos. That Why would you think that's interesting? A man who's willing to reveal his inner life. Why would you think that is life. interesting? Because I live he, in chaos. See, this is a man who's not like out there in the world, the la-la land, where they show you only the best. This You're is a like man all who men, truth. Joe. You drop a clothing piece down and you expect someone to pick up it. And I will do that, Joe, if you, you let me hang sorry. in. I will. And here is life in my uh, incredible office. It goes something like this. Hello? 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 The first call Monday. Don't forget. Hello? Phil, Phil tell, 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 tell him what a wonderful man he is. You know, tell him, I got a sore throat, tell him. Yeah, yeah, yes. You want to hear something? Oh, that's you're easy. The that's definite. Man since, uh, King you can Solomon. count. Look, we've been friends King for Solomon over, over 100 years, haven't we? Uh, we, no, we no, never no, said no, no to each other. Did we ever say no to each other? A very uh, you trust me and have a good day. God bless you. Pray for me. Yes. Monday morning. Don't forget, please. You're a beautiful person. Right. Have a nice weekend, bye. All I know about Sesu Hayakawa is that this man is a legend. We can read in any book that he was the highest priced star for many, many years. I mean, we, we're not denying this, it's a fact, right? But I haven't seen too many of the pictures. Did you usually uh, co-star with American leading ladies? Yeah, you used to. Were you, many were, years. Were you a menace or a villain or a... a uh, both. Both. Menace, villain, and hero, sometimes. Did you sometimes <laughs> get the girl? No, very Usually, scarcely. <laughs> very scarcely got the girl. <laughs> yeah. There were two things we were sure of in the silent movies then, that the Indians never got the best of it, and Sesu Hayakawa never got the girl. Right? <laughs> Not always. But. This is only the beginning of the beginning, my friends. The start of the start. The beginning of the beginning of the beginning. Don't ever leave me. If you do, I'll feel insecure. Stay with me, please. Joe Franklin, congratulations. And what I would like to talk to you about is your sex life. How can somebody keep an active, great, good sex life while being on the air for 40 years? Next time I'll meet you, we'll talk about it. Joe, I've been watching you since I was a little child. And I've enjoyed it. Happy anniversary, and thanks for the memories. Say, say it. Here we are inside Joe Franklin. Here we are inside Joe Franklin's office. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. Beautiful. Oh, this is his mother. That's Joe's mother? That's Joe Franklin's mother, Annie Franklin. And she used to help out me and Joe do the cleaning he was on a Sunday, how I met Joe and everything. That's his mother up there. So this is his original desk. Now this desk is the original one of his, uh, where he started with and everything. Yeah. And this is this other thing, uh, his appointment book. <laughs> with the, all the names and stuff. We got loads of these books. Is it organized? Yeah, it's organized. organized. Oh, so uh, this is all the names of stars and stuff. He puts them into the book on each different page and stuff so we keep track. Come here, come on, come on. This is the belly dancer. What's his name again? What's the Ambrosia. One? The Ambrosia. And she, she was uh, on her show, Joe show too then. Yes, you pull people weighing out me again. I was in California recently, and at the Laugh Factory, my good friend Jamie Osada made a comedy night uh, sort of uh, a testimonial uh, for my anniversary. And among those who got up and reminisced were a young uh, superstar named Andrew Dice Clay. So the bottom line, he puts me in this Joe Franklin gong show, right? Which I won. And what you got for that was two weeks opening for Tiny Tim at this place, the Fireside Lounge in Queens, in an appearance on Joe's show. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I come up to his office. I mean, his office is more, at that time, it was like this closet. I don't even know what it was, you know, with photographs and magazines. There's dogs eating out of bowls in there, you know. 
And I came up there, I didn't come up sort of as, I came up in character, I came up like Jerry Lewis's nutty professor with this tuxedo shirt, my pants rolled up to my, my thighs. And, and what it was, I come up and I walk in, I'm like, uh, excuse me, are you Joe Franklin? Yes, well actually I have an act I would like to do. And at this point, he don't know, should I call the cops? You know what I'm saying? So what I do now, I turn around to put my hand in my jacket to slick my hair back to do this change into John Travolta. And there's another guy standing there that thinks I got a gun. So he goes to grab my hand, and I pull out this comb this long, you know? So now I slick the hair back, he knows everything's right. And I look at him, I go, listen to this, Joe, you're gonna die. I swear, you're gonna crack up, right? What? What? <laughs> but that was the beginning, and uh, here we are today. It's a beautiful thing, the 40th anniversary, and uh, I'm glad I was able to make it. You know, I got my own attitude. I got things happening. I'll admit that. <laughs> you know, I don't have time for all these personal appearances, autograph signing, but what can I tell you? When your nature's masterpiece, you can't help it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Joe, from one talk show host to another, happy 40th, and may you have 40 more. Maybe 30. How can I say something nice about a guy who's been in show business for 40 years, he can't sing, he can't dance, he can't act, he can't recite, he can't tap dance, what can he do? He does nothing. But you know something? He's a wonderful human being. Happy, happy, happy 40 and 40 more, Joe. Learn how to dance. Happy anniversary, Joe. I've enjoyed every dollar of it. I've enjoyed every dollar of it. <laughs> You took me from an unemployed actress oh, to be a millionaire. Close. Well, not quite. Close, very close. You were the only person that put me on the show even when I was out of work. Sally, good luck with the movie and let's be in touch for many, many years. Hi, Joe. This is Claudette Colbert. I just flew in from Nome, Alaska to be part of your celebration today. I want to wish you a happy anniversary. I also want to have my teeth fixed. But we can't have everything we want in the world. So if you think I'm going to wish you anything much at these prices, you have another think coming. You want it now? You rather think, I mean. No? Well, that's tough. But you know... Good morning. Something really different today and very exciting for me. A special presentation prepared a short while ago and soon to be a weekly series on your television screen. A preview of Joe Franklin's Hollywood Memories. Enjoy. Joe Franklin's Hollywood Memories, that's me, Joe Franklin, and I've been uh, dealing in nostalgia for about 24 years here in New York TV, and now I'll be sharing it with everybody right here in my private world, in my den. Uh, no frills, no gloss, nothing except my movies, my photographs, my sheet music, my nostalgia, and mostly you and me together, warm and intimate and reminiscing. The uh, subject matter today will be comedy, the so-called golden age of comedy. Great, great comedians, many of them totally gone. They say that Broadway is the longest street with the shortest memory. There's a broken heart for every light on Broadway. But bear in mind, everybody you'll be seeing on this program was once number one. I'll be right back with some of your friends and my friends as we do some old-fashioned comedy following these interesting words. Stay with me. Okay, my friends, starting off the uh, festivities or the festivities will be my idol, Bing Crosby, the old groaner when he was uh, the young groaner, maybe about a half century ago. And this is what I mean. Let's watch. Here in your arms, I can't remain. Oh, let me kiss you 
once again Soon we must say Auf Wiedersehen Auf Wiedersehen, my dear Your love will cling to me Through the lonely daytime Each night will bring to me The magic memory of May time I know my heart won't beat again Until the day we meet again Sweetheart, goodbye Auf Wiedersehen Auf Wiedersehen My dear Well, that was the king of sing almost a half century ago, and let me tell you something, that uh, his autobiography, Bing's autobiography, was called Call Me Lucky, but if anybody was lucky, it was me, because I was one of the last to chat with the great man on TV. Th there are no words. It had to be uh, and will forever remain one of the milestones, if not the milestone, of my career. Not only in the Golden Dozen, but in the Golden Two or Three, in my recollection, in my reminiscence, had to be my interview with the master, Bing Crosby. I was on a memory lane cruise. I took some old timers on a cruise, and I gotta give you one name. He's no longer with us, sadly, but he always spoke about you and the Hotel Belvedere. Yeah. Sid Gary. What Sid is Gary, the master of the double top. Did you know him? He was, on, uh, he was one of my closest friends. You know, he, he was really the fellow that started double talk. Before. And he was the best. Right. The greatest, because he had a real professorial appearance. He dressed very, looked like he's going down to Wall Street or somewhere.